it's been my absolute pleasure to see its inauguration and to be part of the guidance of its process over the last 10 years. And over that time, there's been some great advances when it comes to implant technology. Great advances when it comes to the surgery that we do and great outcomes as a result of the effort of families and the tutelage and guidance of our rehabilitationists. But one thing hasn't changed, and that's the fact that with each surgery, parents need to take a leap of faith. They need to take a leap of faith to trust in the surgery, to trust in the technology, and to trust in the program. And it's been my pleasure to be part of that guidance, and I look forward for the next 10 years and further to do more of the same. The Cochlear Implant Program, as it stands today, represents the product of cooperation and collaboration between two strong partners, Sydney Children's Hospital and the Shepherd Centre. Yeah. And it could not have been established if it wasn't for the foresight of Michael Bryden and Henley Harrison, and we have them to thank for what we're so proud of today. So I'd like to congratulate all the families and all the staff for a great 10 years. Uh, Liam started at the Shepherd Centre when he was 14 months old with a severe bilateral hearing loss. Um, he had a progressive hearing loss. We knew he would need implantation at some point. All those years ago they didn't implant children that were severe so we had to wait till he became profound which took nearly 12 months of hearing tests every few weeks till we very excitedly ran into Wollongong Shepherd Centre with our profound bilateral sheet from Australian Hearing so we could then be implanted. Um, at that time the Shepherd Centre said we're just starting a program to implant children and would we be interested in letting Liam be the first and as we were very happy with the Shepherd Centre, we didn't want to go anywhere else, so we pursued. Our hope for Liam was that the language that he acquired would stay, because Liam was obviously losing language as he was losing his hearing. We wanted him to go to mainstream school. That was really, really important to us, and an implant would give us the best chance of getting him into mainstream school. Um, and we wanted what was best for him. We wanted him to hear, so an implant allowed those options. Um, our fear was being the first and wondering who this surgeon was and his first child in Australia and it was my little baby and could I trust him? Um, but Philip was fantastic, so that alleviated that concern. Um, and what the process would hold, being the first, there was no one else to sort of hold your hand as a parent and say, this is what's going to happen. It, it's been a wonderful, wonderful journey and one we would do again in a heartbeat if that situation arose, definitely. So we would like to say thank you for being the first and to the 200th, congratulations. That's very exciting that it has grown to that extent that there are that many children that are now being implanted. So well done. Um, my name is Liam and I just play drums and I go to school in St Andrews. And I play soccer on the weekend. And I, on in the summer I play cricket. And um, I sometimes play drums. And my mum doesn't like it when she plays it when I play it there. And Sophie Jews. Um, I go to Pittwater High School. School's been really great at the moment. I have lots of friends. Um, I'm in year nine, so yeah, I'm getting a lot of work. Um, I'm, I do netball on Saturday morning, and I do this mentoring program every every fortnight on Tuesday. 
um, and that's really great because I get to hang with other kids my age. Um, well, I started going there when I was four years old. I just had my first cochlea after I turned four. So I started going there. I've had some really great therapists, um, Linda, Andrew, and um, they've all been really great. And they've all been really funny and tried to make the sessions as fun as possible. My name is Jenny Jeeves and I'm Sophie's mum. And Sophie was born nine weeks premature at Royal North Shore Hospital and she failed the first three screening tests that she had, um, hearing screening tests in hospital. So when she came home from hospital that there was a strong suspicion that she had a hearing loss. Um, tests um, in the first few months after we came home um, confirmed that and so we started searching around for um, programs um, for us both to join and a friend had already joined the Shepherd Centre and her little girl was going there and so we went along one day and saw the play group and knew that we'd come to the right place and uh, Sophie's been going there since she was probably around six months old. Um, I know that she said four years, that's probably her memory of um, when she started there, but she started around six months old and started off with hearing aids and uh, we went for weekly lessons and um, had so much confidence in the staff and the therapists that worked there. And then when it was suggested, when she was around three and a half, her hearing started to deteriorate further and uh, Anne Fulcher suggested that she might be a candidate for a cochlear implant, which uh, was pretty massive for us at the time, but we thought we had so much confidence in the staff that we that we just went with it. So when Sophie was five, we left the uh, formal lessons of the Shepherd Centre and she went off to big school and, uh, and she's done really well at school. She's been able to uh, keep up with her peers. She does well in class. She participates really well in class discussion and she's been supported by the itinerant um, teacher for the deaf at um, through the education department and she gets five hours support a week through them as well um, and we've continued to go back to the shepherd center um, probably once or twice a year for maps and uh, and but no further formal lessons when sophie was 14 um, a second cochlear implant was suggested to us by Katie, our audiologist at the Shepherd Centre and uh, probably wasn't really something that we were thinking about or even ready for but uh, again we were so confident in, in, in their ability and their knowledge that, uh, that we kind of went swept along with the process and, and we went ahead and uh, probably four months later Sophie um, had her second cochlear implant which was beginning of March this year. Congratulations to the Sydney Children's Hospital and the First Sounds program for their 10 year anniversary and uh, thank you so much to the Shepherd Centre and Dr Chang and all the audiologists and therapists that work there, it's really made such a massive difference to our life. My name's Tom Curtis, I'm one of the nose and throat surgeons here. Um, I perform the cochlear implants on uh, some of the children that are coming through the program and uh, I'm very fortunate to have that role. I, I think we're world's best practice. Um, there's obviously different things that different people do around the world but we had a, we had a girl come from Japan not so long ago who, um, and you think of Japan as a first world country with great um, medical expertise and she'd um, been implanted on the wrong side and um, hadn't done very well and she decided to choose us as her implant program and has done really well mm -hmm. since we, we find, found out that she could be implanted on the other side. Um, we get um, kids from all around the state, interstate uh, and I think the Shepherd Centre along with the program here at Sydney Children's um, and all the uh, paramedical services, the speech therapy, the audiology services are as good as anywhere in the world. Also the, the results are outstanding. The quality of the implants have really improved. 
uh, and the fact that we're now implanting kids as young as five months means that uh, um, we're finding that they acquire speech at normal ranges, normal levels, um, can go to a normal school, speak on a telephone. There's nothing more rewarding than um, giving hearing and speech development to a deaf child. It's one of the most rewarding things I do, actually. I'd like to congratulate the Shepherd Centre on their 200th implant. I'm really pleased to be able to be, inv be involved with the program and uh, I wish you all the best in the future.